Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to turn to Linda Kosher of Stop TTIP. Tell us a little bit about TTIP. What is it? Well, it stands for the US-EU Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership. So a free trade agreement between the US and the EU, but not really about trade. Trade's a feel-good word that corporations can hide behind. Um, okay, let me just stop you right there for a second. So in other words, it sounds like another one of these we, deals like TTP we've heard about, right? That's another deal. It's very similar to T TPP T right? on the other side of the world. Yeah. And, and um, as you're to get on your point for a second, it sounds so nice in trade. I talk about trade, but when you dig down into it, there's, mm, there's some not so great things. Talk a little bit about that. Well, with TTIP, they're actually coming around to corporations pretty much writing law and then suing governments if, if there's law that they don't like. That's how far it's getting. Now, this seems incredible to me. In other words, the example I've heard is that in the UK, for example, you have fracking going on. And these are some of these companies are coming from outside the UK. And they're involved in fracking. And um, if, in fact, they cause a lot of problems, they cause a lot of environmental problems, they can go and sue the government for the duress of being accused of having created problems, and then they can get the government to pay penalties to the company and to raise money to pay those penalties by taxing people in the UK, right? So they give the, these outside corporations and corporations uh, powers that, that are above the, the, the country itself. Isn't that correct? Yes, it is. In fact, uh, you're talking about the investor state dispute settlement aspect of TTIP. Um, but in fact, all free trade agreements tie us into, they tie us into permanent neoliberalism. That's the idea of free trade agreements. And so via international trade law, which is above national law, which is above EU law, and then uh, that's a form of law that is only judged on free trade values. So that's what we get tied permanently into with free trade agreements generally. So TTIP has all the usual inclusions of free trade agreements like uh, tax tariff reductions, liberalisation of services to give uh, service investors rights, uh, the big public procurement grab, strengthened intellectual property rights for corporations. So that's all the stuff that's usually in free trade agreements. But the TTIP's much more. It has, as you say, ISDS, Investor State Dispute Settlement. But the real main part of it is regulatory harmonization, which is bringing together the, harmon the regulation of the EU and the US so that they're the same. But when you consider this is a corporate agenda, so it's corporations, transnational corporations pushing this, and particularly financial services like the City of London Corporation pushing this agenda. You can see that what they call trade irritants regulations are going to come down. Trade irritants. That's the term they use in trade speak. Anything that kind yeah. of gets in the way of them making uh, some of these profits. You know, it seems that um, the problems in the last few years, particularly in the banking sector, is that there's very little accountability. And yet, uh, and also we've noticed that there seems to be almost a two-tier justice system evolving, where corporations have rights that are not enjoyed by everyone else, and they seem to be getting away with stuff that if the average person tried it, they'd go to jail. And But these, these types of deals like TTIP and TTP, it was, we're talking about almost now less accountability by creating a three-tier justice system not only do the corporations nationally are exempt from the rule of law, but now they're giving themselves the right to be exempt from rule of law on a global basis. It's less accountability. It's going in the opposite direction than what you'd expect given all the scandals of the past few years. Your thoughts? Um, well, with this regulatory harmonization, the EU has a lot to lose. People in the EU have a lot to lose because our standards on... on uh on health and safety generally, GM food, lots of food standards, chemical safety, data protection, they're all higher in the, in the EU. So harmonization means we lose a lot. Financial service regulation, at this point in time, the US has higher regulation. So that's uh, the EU's pushing hard for, for that to be included in the trade agreement, so pulling down 
financial service regulation. Well, when somebody has a complaint, they, they go to what body to express that complaint for, for redress? It's, an, it's a global institution now. It's an international institution. They don't go to the, they don't go to, uh, the no, government. No, it's above national law, yeah. So yeah. That, 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 the, the argument is that, that national courts will be biased. And they also apply that to the European Court of Justice, that that will be biased too. So they're not good enough. So it has to go to an arbitration panel, um, which is three uh, trade lawyers, and, but importantly, they, they, so it is supranational, supranational in that sense, but also the fact that they judge just on free trade criteria. So all the, what we, everything that we expect in law, considerations of environment and, um, and, and social welfare, that that's, has no place in it whatsoever. It's only judged on criteria of free trade. Right, this idea of free trade, this term free trade is anything but free trade. It's not, it's not even neoliberalism. I mean, neoliberalism, if going back to the history of economic liberalism or Adam Smith or the idea of there being uh, supply and demand is matched somehow in the marketplace, that's been completely corrupted now because you have a few monopolists and oligopolists that have completely taken over these markets and they've imposed monopoly pricing. So if there was free trade, for example, you'd see, you wouldn't see the kind of price, price gouging you see in the UK. They have, for example, in the UK, there's six big energy companies, and they routinely rig prices. They gouge prices. They collude. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Now, now not only do, so as a victim of price gouging in the UK, under the schemes that you're talking about here, I can't even go to the UK government anymore to complain. I have to go to a supranational global institution to complain. And of course, they're nowhere. They're amorphous. They're, they're, they, they're, it's a moving target. And, they're, and we're using their definitions of what free trade is. Which yeah, somehow... You don't have any rights to complain to these panels anyway. Right. <laughs> but, even if, but, but even if I did, in other words, there's even less chain of responsibility. It's being diluted, it seems to me. Okay, let me, let me move on here. So what about uh, here in the UK, the NHS, for example, what impact would this have? Uh, would this deal have on healthcare here in, in the in the UK? Okay, I was in Brussels a few years back when when I heard from the Trade Commission that health was the primary target for harmonisation. Right, years years back, even though this agreement was just formally introduced last year, and with the Health and Social Care Act that was introduced here as national legislation at the end of 2012, that harmonisation with the US has happened here with the NHS. What difference the TTIP will make is that whatever, however disastrous the act proves to be, that it becomes irreversible once it's in the trade agreement. So um, the Labour Party, for instance, at the moment is running on a, a pre-election uh, line of reversing or repealing the act, but uh, with this coming in fast, they actually won't be able to, so we need a more realistic uh, presentation from the Labour Party, from the opposition. And what, what we really need is an exemption of the NHS from the trade agreement. Obviously, we'd like to stop the trade agreement, but we need, uh, as a fallback position, we need an exemption of the NHS from the trade agreement, for sure. And that has to come through Cameron. It's almost as if the, um, the, the concept here is to benchmark your public services against the worst examples. Usually in, in corporate settings, there's this idea of benchmarking where you try to create benchmarks against the best examples in class. But here, here's the American health system, which is a scandalous catastrophe. And yet the UK under Cameron wants to benchmark the UK NHS against a loser. Uh, same thing with fracking. Fracking has been proven to be an enormous disaster in the US. It doesn't, it's not cost effective. It's an ecological disaster. And it's very short-lived. It doesn't provide anywhere near the length of energy resources that they, they claim to do. Uh, and yet the UK wants to benchmark its fracking and create fracking against a loser, against a complete catastrophe. Uh, same thing with help to buy for real estate. It's modeled on the subprime catastrophe in America. So the, David Cameron seems to be on a collision course with, with um, reality in that he's constantly benchmarking policies in the UK against American disasters. Is, why do you, how do you explain that? Is, is, he, is he just, he, it's just all these consultants have totally corrupted him or is he just incompetent? Our government works for the City of London Corporation. 
And can I just go back that the, another aspect of uh, an aim for this trade agreement, so-called trade agreement, is to set global rules. So uh, you, you're talking about benchmarking, but this the an aim of this trade agreement is definitely to set benchmarks that in in trade that then the rest of the world gets pulled into. Right. So a lot of people over the years have talked about. Um, you know, five years ago, when you when you put out a phrase like "new world order," it sounded very conspiratorial. But here we are in the year 2014, and these these we're deals, we're getting there. We're getting there. TTIP and TTP and ISDS. This mm -hmm. really is a global governance yeah. issue. Well, TTIP and, and TPP, transatlantic and transpacific. The U.S. is the country in both. Yeah. So the uh, Cameron is trading Britain's sovereignty for a, a few bucks, a few pounds. Isn't that, as a British person, does that kind of make you sick inside? I think we need a lot more uh, exposing of the role of the City of London Corporation. Uh, for instance, I've, I've actually gotten into meetings where those guys around the table give their, um, give their directions directly. These are the guys from the banks and the insurance companies give their uh, directions directly to the, the trade bureaucrats who then take UK trade policy into the EU. So that bypasses the parliament, bypasses the public completely. It comes directly from the City of London right, to, so to the EU. When you say City of London, we're talking about uh, the banks, essentially, and the big four banks, which would include, um, for example, HSBC, who's been recently caught. Yeah, essentially transnational, right? We're not talking about anything British here. This is transnational financial services. Um, with the City of London as their, as their lobby mechanism. Yeah, and we know that they've been able to successfully wiggle out of any accountability for laundering Mexican drug money, for example. Or even um, they have been caught recently um, laundering money for Hezbollah. So Cameron is benchmarking his policy against banks that are laundering money for groups that he himself considers terrorists. Is, maybe it's just duplicity. Maybe he's just... Maybe he's just ill, and he needs. There needs to be some kind of intervention. I guess that's what elections are for. Um, I think it's time to wake up from from thinking that that our governments our governments have been acting for the people, have been uh, acting for the City of London Corporation. All right, we'll leave it there. Linda Kausher, thanks so much for being on the Kaiser Report. Right. And that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. I'd like to thank our guest, Linda Kausher of Stop TTIP. If you'd like to get in touch, tweet us at Kaiser Report. Until next time, bye, y'all.